Chicago Viva, and uh, we're very much looking forward to your class marriage. Okay, thank you very much. So I have a PowerPoint prepared for each chapter. Not too much on this first one. Anyway, uh, can we, I'll share the screen. Am I co-host? Am I co-host, Sumaduri? Um, can, I, can I share this? Yes, Maharaj, you can share the screen. I can share the screen, eh? okay. So is everyone able to see the PowerPoint? Yes, ma'am. You can see. Okay. So Bhagavad Gita, Gita Gyan, the essence of Bhagavad Gita. You can see here I put a quote from the Gita Mahatmya. Gita Mahatmya means the glories, are, the glory of the Bhagavad Gita. It's very beautiful Sanskrit verses which are written by very great, powerful Acharya named Shankaracharya. So this is one of the well-known verses. You can see I put the Sanskrit and then we have the translation below. Sarva Panishado Gavo Dokta Gopala Nandana Nanda Vatsa Sadir Bhokta Duktam Gitam Ritam Mahat. This Gitopanishad, Gitopanishad is another name for Bhagavad Gita. Right? So the Bhagavad Gita is one of the Upanishads. And described here, it's the essence of all the Upanishads. Upanishads are Vedic literature. There are actually 108 Upanishads. Bhagavad Gita is not one of these. Bhagavad Gita is separate. Bhagavad Gita is from Mahabharata. Mahabharata. Oh, trans I, translation. I wish I would please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, all grace to Silver Bar. Guru Maharaj, I do Thai translation as well. Okay. So in this wonderful verse from the Gita Mahatmya it describes the Bhagavad Gita is the essence and it's just like a cow. And Lord Krishna is famous as a cowherd boy. So he's milking this cow. <laughs> when Krishna was a young boy, he grew up in a village called Vrindavan, and his father had a big herd of cows. And so Lord, Lord Krishna, as a young boy, he used to take care of the cows. And when you have a cow, in order to get the cow to give milk, you have to bring the calf. And so it's said that the Bhagavad Gita is like a cow, and Arjuna is like the calf. And learned scholars and pure devotees are to drink the milk of the Bhagavad Gita. แล้วตรงนี้นะคะก็เอ่อได้ให้คําเปรียบเทียบไว้นะคะว่าเอ่อความจริงเนี่ยเอ่อภาวะกิตานะคะก็เปรียบเสมือนกับวัวแล้วก
together we can all recite. These are very traditional prayers. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tosmai Shri Gurave Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhukti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pasyatya Desha Tarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I'm, we are dedicating this presentation of the Bhagavad Gita to the author of our text of the Bhagavad Gita, which we're using. He happens to be my own spiritual master and he's the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. His name is His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Here's another verse from Gita Mahatmya, just so that we can understand something of the glories of what we're reading and how we can benefit. Gita Shastram idam punyam yatapatyat prayat puman vishnopadam avapnoti vaya shokadi varjita. One who with a regulated mind recites with devotion this Bhagavad Gita scripture, which is the bestower of all virtue will attain to a holy abode such as Vaikuntha, the residence of Lord Vishnu, which is always free from the mundane qualities based on fear and lamentation. Arjuna? Mm -hmm. มีความตั้งใจมีความตั้งใจในที่จะอ่านพระพุทธกิตาด้วยการวิตนเสสละนะคะเอ่อพระเวทเล่มนี้นะคะจะช่วยเอ่อเป็นถือว่าเป็นว
And the Bhagavad Gita is spoken before the beginning of the battle. Now Krishna had chosen not to fight, that he wasn't going to take part in the battle. He was only going to be the driver of the chariot for Arjuna. There are two sides taking part in the battle, obviously. On one side you have the five Pandavas, of which Arjuna is one of the five Pandavas. And on the other side are the, the cousin brothers of the Pandavas called the Kauravas. And there are 100 of them. All right, so just to give you some more information about what's taking place here, uh, this battle took place about 5,000 years ago. So, the, on one side you have the Pandavas with all of their allies, the different supporters, the different kings and their armies who are on their side. And on the other side you have the Kauravas, the 100 sons of Dhritarashtra. And they're the cousins of the Pandavas and they have all of their allies on their side and their armies. So there's a huge number of people gathered together to take part in this battle. Right. Mahabharata describes many millions of people coming to take part in this battle and they're all soldiers, they're all military people coming there desiring to fight. You can see in the illustration we've put uh, the, the one chariot, this is the chariot of Arjuna with Krishna driving and you can see the white horses and they're in the middle of the two armies. So, in this Bhagavad Gita, there are 18 chapters and we're, we've divided it one week we will speak each week we will speak six chapters the first section the first six chapters deal mainly with karma yoga and then the, the second six chapters are more on bhakti yoga and then the final section 13 to 18 will be more on jnana yoga and so we'll, it will take us three weeks to complete. We won't have class on Saturdays because we have our own regular program taking place on Saturdays. So there are 18 chapters in the Bhagavad Gita and there are 700 verses. Mm -hmm. 
and we've given you the, the different speakers of these verses, one verse only is spoken by Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra is the father of the Kauravas, of the 100, he has 100 sons who are taking part in the battle. And Dhritarashtra is blind. He's blind from birth, he's blind materially and also blind spiritually. And his 100 sons, the Kauravas, they're, they have their vision materially, but they're also blind spiritually. So the Bhagavad Gita begins with Dhritarashtra inquiring. We will see. Here you here you can see the first verse of the Bhagavad Gita. Dhritarashtra Uvacha. Dharma Kshetre Kurukshetre Samaveda Yitsavaha Mamaka Pandavas Jaiva Kim Akurvata Sanjaya. In the illustration, you can see two men. The one man sitting up on a higher level, this is the blind king known as Dhritarashtra. And the man sitting on the lower level to him, he is Sanjaya. And Sanjaya is the secretary of Dhritarashtra. So he also, he will speak a number of verses in the Bhagavad Gita. We saw here 41 verses, a total of 41 verses he speaks in the Bhagavad Gita. Now Sanjay was given a, a special power by the grace of a great sage called Vyasadeva that he, although he was not on the battlefield, he was sitting in the palace, he could see everything taking place on the battlefield at Kurukshetra. So even 5,000 years ago, they had these uh, powers of transcendental, uh, of, of, of some kind of transmission from a faraway place. He could, he could see everything taking place, although he was far away from the place. He was able to see what was happening and he could hear everything being said also. So the Bhagavad Gita begins with this inquiry from Dhritarashtra and he's inquiring to his secretary Sanjay about what did, af, after my sons and the sons of Pandu assembled in the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra desiring to fight, what did they do? <laughs> Uh, 
ตัดว่านีตราสราตรัสว่าโอสัญญาหลังจากบรรดาเหล่าโอรสของข้าและโอรสของพันดูมาประชุมกันยังสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์แห่งกุรุเชตรามีความประสงค์จะสู้รบกันพวกเขาทําอะไรกัน Right, Dhritarashtra naturally he has 100 sons taking part in this battle at the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra. So he's concerned. What happened? What did they do? He's concerned because he thinks maybe they won't fight. Maybe they'll just the influence of the holy place will affect them, and they'll decide that they shouldn't fight. Of course, Dhritarashtra would be happy if the Pandavas decided not to fight. If they just decide this is a holy place and we're not going to fight, we'll just let you have the kingdom and go away. Then Dhritarashtra would be happy about that. So, the Dhritarashtra is he 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 doesn't want his sons to compromise. He wants that they should fight because. He wants to see that his sons rule the kingdom, and that they are the kings, they are the rulers. So you can understand this Kurukshetra conflict is due to the different demands of the two sides, the Pandavas and the Kauravas. They both. Want some land? They want to rule. And so the Kauravas, they are, are in possession of the kingdom, and they don't want to give any land to the Pandavas. So in, in order to get some land, the Pandavas have no alternative but to go to war. And the war is not a small affair. It's a, like a a world war. It's one of the biggest wars ever to take place. Okay, so we're going to jump ahead a little bit to the fifteenth sloka. And here you can see Lord Krishna blowing his conch shell, and his conch shell is has a name. It's called the Panchajanya, and Arjuna also blew his, the Devadatta, and Bima, who is known as Vrikodara, the voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks, he blew his conch shell called. ปุญจาเราเราก็จะเอ่อดูต่อนะคะในสโลกที่ 
ที่ใช้พลังมหาศาลเนี่ยได้ทรงเป่าหอยสังอันยอดเยี่ยมที่ชื่อว่าพระอุณพระอุณ So just like in Thailand before a war they would have the drum and they would bring up a drum and the drummer would play the drum and beat the drum the war drum and it would encourage people into battle and so similarly 5,000 years ago in the Vedic culture the warriors would blow their conch shells. <laughs> The conch shell is one of the symbols of Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu has four arms, and in each arm he carries a different symbol. In one of his arms, he carries a conch shell. Right. And so the, this blowing of the conch shells was just prior to the, the start of the battle, and it it's described in the Bhagavad Gita. How when Krishna and Arjuna and Bhima, when they blew their conch shell, then it shattered the hearts of the Kauravas. They were, they could understand the power and the potency behind the Pandavas, and they were not so confident of victory after hearing the sound of the conch shells of Krishna and Arjuna. <laughs> Right, going ahead, another verse, this is text 21 and 22. Arjuna, coming into the middle of, of the battlefield, is addressing Krishna. And he's addressing Krishna to, he said, bring our chariot between the two armies so that I can see those present here who desire to fight and with whom I must contend in this great trial of arms. <laughs> โปรดขับราชรถของข้าไปอยู่ท่ามกลางระหว่างกองทัพทั้งสองฝ่ายเพื่อข้าได้เห็นผู้ที่อยู่ณที่นี้ปรารถนาจะสู้รบและข้าต้องต่อสู้กับผู้ใดในการประลองยุทธอันยิ่งใหญ่ครั้งนี้ So you can see these first verses in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita just setting the scene. They're describing the situation on the battlefield. Arjuna. Is with Krishna, and he's oh, he's asking Krishna, put our chariot in the middle. I want to see everyone who's here. So it happens that when they come into the middle middle of the battlefield. Arjuna sees his teacher, Drona, who is on the other side, he's on the side of the Kauravas. That means he's going to be fighting against Arjuna. And he sees also his own grandfather, Bhishma. And Bhishma is also on the other side, and he's going to be fighting against the Pandavas. So these two people are They have a very dear, intimate relationship with Arjuna.
So those are only two people who Arjuna recognizes, but there are many more. Arjuna sees also other great acharyas who are, he sees also other relatives and cousins and nephews. He sees so many different people who are his friends and who he had connection with. They're all there on the battlefield and they've all come to fight. So, when Arjuna sees all of these people, it has an effect on him. Because Arjuna is a very pious person and he has the heart of a devotee. His heart is not hard and cold, but his heart is soft and he's, he has feelings for other people. We spoke about Dhritarashtra at the beginning. We said Dhritarashtra was blind materially and also spiritually. And his son his sons were also blind spiritually. The, the Kauravas who were opposing Arjuna, they could only see friends and enemies. If you were on their side, you were their friend. If you were on the other side, you were their enemy. So they were making distinction. But Arjuna, his vision was different. He saw everyone, he saw we're all one family. Why are we all fighting like this? So Arjuna became overwhelmed by this situation. He thought, maybe, he thought, what we're doing doesn't seem right. That we're coming here to fight, just to get property, just to get power and to get wealth. It's not worth it. We're going to have to kill each other for this. So Arjuna begins to show uh, physical changes in his body, different symptoms are exhibited in his body due to the situation which he find, finds himself in. For example, it's mentioned here, number one, the limbs of his body are quivering, not out of cowardliness, but out of compassion, out of thought, feelings about people. He cares, he actually cares about people. <laughs> So other, sim other symptoms are mentioned, his mouth drying up, whole body trembling, hair standing on end. เราก็มีอย่างอื่นอีกก็คือรู้สึกว่าปากแห้งนะคะแล้วก็ทางร่างกายเนี่ย
รู้สึกสั่นขาแค่หมดแรง We've, list, we've listed ten different symptoms which Arjuna displayed there on the battlefield, and these are all material symptoms because he's in the bodily conception of life. So although he's in the bodily conception of life, he's a deeply thoughtful person, and he has a lot of thoughts in his mind, a lot of questions. He's questioning about what he's doing. To, is it is it right? So actually, this uh, first chapter we see something of the qualifications which are necessary for someone to take up this, the path of yoga. You want to actually enter into yoga. You should have the similar nature to Arjuna. Arjuna can see things wrong in the world. And he, he knows what he, what's happening is it doesn't seem right that we're all gathering together to kill each other just to get material things. So this is this kind of thoughtfulness, this is required. To take up the study of yoga. So we, you can see in the illustration, you see Arjuna standing here with his hand on his head, and he's really confused. In fact, this, the title of this first chapter in Sanskrit is called the dejection of Arjuna. But this, this dejection of Arjuna, this is a qualification for him to inquire and to understand the science of yoga. And so the first chapter concludes with Arjuna presenting different reasons why he doesn't want to fight. Right? The first reason mentioned was compassion for friends and relatives. Arjuna tell, he talks to Krishna and he tells him, he said, how can I fight and kill people who are my superiors, who are worthy of my worship? So Arjuna, this kind of compassion is it's, it's a good quality, but it, it's also based on the body. His compassion is not spiritual, he's thinking about the body. 
หมือนกับความเมตตาที่ออริจินามีเนี่ยอันนี้เนี่ยมันมันก็ถือว่าโอเคแต่ว่าสิ่งที่เขามีเนี่ยมันเป็นทางร่างกายหรือว่าทางวัตถุมากเกินไปซึ่งมันควรที่จะเป็นทิพย์มากกว่านี้ He can understand that if there's going to be a war there's going to be a lot of deaths there's going to be a lot of suffering and he thought this is really not good เพราะเขาเนี่ยควรที่จะมีความมีการยอมรับได้อยู่แล้วว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเกิดสงครามเนี่ยซึ่งมันจะต้องมีคนตายมีมีการสูญเสียเกิดขึ้นอย่างแน่นอน The second reason why he doesn't want to fight he said There won't be any enjoyment that I won't be able to enjoy, even if I win the battle. I won't enjoy. แล้วก็เหตุผลที่สองนะคะที่ออมอร์จูนาให้เนี่ยก็คือการมีความสุขในหรือว่าสนองความสุขในในออร์จูนาบอกว่าเราค่าจะมีความสุขได้ไงถ้าเราค่าเนี่ยค่าทุกคนไปหมดแล้วค่าจะสวยสุขได้อย่างไร He won't enjoy because. Other the other people are all going to be dead, and before before he can win the battle, he has to kill all these other people, and so in, in the absence of all the other people, he won't be able to enjoy it. Usually, we enjoy something, we can show it off to others, but if the others are not there, there's no enjoyment. <laughs> เพื่อนเพื่อนของข้าไปทั้งหมดเนี่ยถึงแม้ข้าได้รับชัยชนะมาก็ตามเนี่ยก็ไม่รู้ว่าจะแสดงหรือโชว์ชัยชนะนี้ให้กับใครแต่ข้าเนี่ยจะเสวยความสุขกับการชนะในครั้งนี้ได้อย่างไร If there's no enjoyment, why should we bother to do it? The, the whole impetus, the whole desire to do something is that we will enjoy. But if you're not going to enjoy, then why would we bother to even do it? เราจะนากบอกว่าแล้วถ้าเกิดว่าเราจะต้องทำไปโดยที่เราจะไม่สามารถมีความสุขจากมีความสุขจากสิ่งนี้ได้เนี่ยทำไมเราจะต้องทำด้วยเพราะว่าเวลาเราจะทำอะไรก็แล้วแต่เราจะต้องมั่นใจก่อนว่าเราจะได้รับความสุขจากการจากการกระทำในครั้งนี้ Then the third reason was the fear of sinful reactions แล้วเหตุผลที่สามนะคะออจูนาให้ก็คือเกี่ยวกับว่าการกลัวความผลบาปกลัวผลบาป And when you take part in a war, you fight with people, you injure and kill people. Certainly, there'll be reactions for that, and Arjuna is conscious of that. ก็ถ้าเกิดว่าการฆ่าฆ่าเนี่ยมันจะต้องถ้าเกิดฆ่าคนเยอะๆมากเนี่ยก็ต้องจะต้องมีผลบาปติดตัวของตนนะคะในมิสเซนเจอร์นั้นเนี่ยกังวล So Arjuna fears, why should I? Why should I take part in this war if I'm going to get so many sinful reactions? It's going to be a big problem for me. Arjuna is showing his pure heart, his that he he's concerned. He doesn't want to get a lot of sinful reactions. Then the fourth reason, he's concerned about the destruction of the family traditions. Arjuna knew that all the all the heads of the families, the different. Uh, the different groups of kings from different kingdoms. They had all come to take part in the battle here, and if they die, then the heads of the family will there will be no more. There will be no heads of the family there. All it will be left to young people to take over and rule in their absence. <laughs> ของครอบครัวเนี่ยมันจะสูญสลายไปเพราะว่าถ้าเกิดว่าผู้นําครอบครัวตายไปจากสงครามนี้เนี่ยก็จะทําให้มีผู้นําใหม่หรือว่าผู้นําครอบครัวใหม่ที่มาเนี่ยเขาอาจจะไม่รักษาวัฒนธรรมหรือพันธุธรรมเนียมของครอบครัวไว้ So when the elders are not there, then it gives a lot of freedom to young people, 
and they may not be so pious or so religious, they, they may become immoral, they may become degraded and they can bring a lot of problems into the family. So Arjuna thinks deeply about all of these things. These are some of his different reasons for not wanting to fight. We've mentioned one more which comes in the second chapter, indecision, that Arjuna can't make up his mind what to do. Should he fight or should he not fight? Now Arjuna had come into the battlefield on a chariot ready to fight. He'd come with all of his weapons and he'd come with Lord Krishna as his charioteer. But in the middle of the battlefield, he's, he's having a change of mind. He's thinking, I don't want to fight. And we can look, when we look at the reasons, we think, well, Arjuna's got some good arguments here. We think, oh, he's quite, uh, he's got his defense together, he's got some good arguments why he doesn't want to fight. But we will see in the second chapter how Krishna responds to these arguments of Arjuna. Arjuna is fortunate. He has uh, some factors in his favor which certainly help him a lot. And one of the main factors in his favor is that he has the association of Krishna there as his charioteer, who is also his friend. So what we learn from this first chapter, we see that the, the, the proper mood of somebody entering into the study of yoga. That they should be broad-minded, they should be open to see, the, to see things through the eyes of others, not just their own way. And they will have questions, they want to understand why it's like this, it doesn't seem correct. And they will want to understand how, can it, how could it, it be improved, what would be better. So we will hear tomorrow, the second chapter, we will hear how Krishna responds to these words of Arjuna. Are there any questions? Uh, one question from Shaya Mataji Guru. Yes.
เอสชัยอ่ะอ่ะพี่ชายทำเลยอะอะไรนะอะ host have to unmute her I think she's already unmuted okay 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 เอออาจารย์นะคะพี่มีคําถามหนึ่งซึ่งไม่เกี่ยวกับคิตาเท่าไหร่แต่ว่าเป็นคําถามที่คนไทยถามมาเยอะพี่ขออนุญาตถามนิดนึงอะค่ะเกี่ยวกับปิชนาค่ะก็คือเออมีคําถามมาจากเอ่อชาวพุทธนะคะคือว่าไม่สมควรที่จะเอารูปของพระพุทธรูปไปทําเป็นไอสิ่งที่ไม่เหมาะสมเช่นเป็นขนมหรืออะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะซึ่งเราสาววงเองอะค่ะเวลาที่มีปาร์ตี้หรือมีอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะเราก็จะมีกินเค้กรูปจักรนาดหรือว่ากินเค้กรูปลาด้าลานีอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะซึ่งก็เลยอยากจะให้มหาลาษอธิบายตรงนี้นิดนึงอะค่ะว่าทําไมเราถึงเหมือนกับว่าเอนเกจกับปิชนาได้ได้ง่ายแล้วทําไมเอ่อคนส่วนใหญ่เอ่อบางศาสนาถึงแอนตี้สิ่งพวกนี้เราจะทํายังไงให้รู้สึกว่าเป็นกลางอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะขอบคุณมากค่ะฮาริปิชนาอ uh, her question is she got many uh, many Thai friends ask her about this is uh, especially in in Thailand for Lord Buddha they are not really you know make uh, maybe make cake for like in the Lord Buddha uh, picture or make uh, cartoon or something toys something like that Lord picture they will not uh, bring To do anything like that, but uh, for in Krishna consciousness, sometimes devotee make cake, uh, and we have also Krishna picture on the cake, and we cut it, we eat it, something like that. So in this way, how how can we explain to them? Well, I I don't know. I've never seen this practice where people put Krishna's picture on the cake. It's something new to me. <laughs> I don't understand why they do that. Generally, we offer the cake. We offer the cake to Krishna, but I've never heard about putting Krishna's picture on the cake. Maybe at Govardhan Puja, we would build a hill and we would put Lord Krishna on the hill. Actually, the hill is not different from Krishna. The Govardhan hill is not different, and Krishna. Actually, it should be underneath the hill, not on top of it. He, he Krishna, holds up the hill. Now, sometimes people do put Krishna's picture on their shirt, or they may put a Krishna on the cloth. And then that's not good because if you put Krishna on the shirt and then when you bow down, if you go on the fall, if you go on the ground, roll on the ground, or offer obeisances, then you put Krishna on the ground. It's not good. So we don't encourage people to put Krishna's picture on the shirt or on the cloth also and wrap your body with Krishna's picture. It's not very good. ตามความจริงแล้วนะคะเราก็ไม่ได้ส่งเสริมเอ่อไม่ว่าบางครั้งเนี่ยเราจะเห็นได้ว่าสาวบางคนจะเอารูปพระชนามาทําเป็นเสื้ออะไรเงี้ยซึ่งบางครั้งเวลาเขาเอ่อก้มลงกราบอะไรเงี้ยค่ะเสื้อนั้นก็จะไปโดนพื้นบ้างอะไรเงี้ยซึ่งเป็นสิ่งที่เราเนี่ยไม่ได้ส่งเสริม Now some people they may do these things they may think it you know they can make money this way they do it for a business it's not proper We don't encourage it. So just like in Buddhism, you know that 
there are people who do these things if, with Buddha, and you know, you, you try, you, you explain to people it's not correct, but uh, in the same way we also explain to people it's not correct to do these things with Krishna. It takes some time to educate people what is the proper culture and how to respect Krishna, how to respect Buddha. Uh, next question we have here from yeah. Kanapriya uh -huh. Thank you for a wonderful class. Actually, the question from my father, Guru Krishna Prabhuji. He asked that it seemed like Dhritarashtra knows from his heart that Pandava's side will surely win the battle. But why he still let his sons go to the battle and fight against them? อาจารย์ค่ะค่ะคําว่าเอ่อท่านดิตราสตราเนี่ยความจริงเนี่ยน่าจะรู้อยู่แก่ใจนะคะว่าความจริงเนี่ยฝั่งคันดาวะเนี
Yeah, there was there were signs of victory for the Pandavas. For example, one of the signs of victory was Hanuman was on the flag of Arjuna's chariot. But that didn't mean anything to Dhritarashtra or to his sons. They didn't care about Hanuman being on the flag of Arjuna, but it meant a lot to the Pandavas. <laughs> And then the Pandavas have also Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna, his consort is the goddess of fortune. Lord Krishna is described as by the name Madhava. And so Madhava's the wife is the goddess of fortune, and wherever the goddess of fortune is, there is auspiciousness, there's good fortune. And so he's on the side of the Pandavas. But materialistic people cannot understand the value. They have no faith in Krishna, uh, no faith in the goddess of fortune. Their faith is only just give me the money, give me the power, give me the men. They don't care about these things like gods and goddesses. Then because, because the battle was fought at Kurukshetra, and Kurukshetra is also described in the first words of Bhagavad Gita, Dharma Kshetri Kurukshetri. Kurukshetra is a place of Dharma. So that's to the advantage of the Pandavas because they're very Dharmic people. But the, the, the other side, Dhritarashtra's side, army, his sons, they're not Dharmic. <laughs> So Dhritarashtra was looking at everything materially. He was blind spiritually. He was looking only at the material thing. And so as far as the material vision went, it appeared that his sons should win. But after Krishna speaks the Bhagavad Gita, then Sanjay tells Dhritarashtra, and you will see at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, Sanjay says to Dhritarashtra, your sons are not going to win. They don't have a chance. But even then, it, you know, they're not going to back out because they've already, they wanted the war. They tried to, Krishna, Krishna had gone there just before the battle with a letter from Maharaj Yudhisthira saying, let's, let's settle everything without the war. We don't need to go to war. Let's settle everything. But 
Duryodhan wouldn't have anything to do with it. And he tried to arrest Krishna. He tried to capture Krishna. And at that time, Krishna assumed a, a, a universal form. เอ่อท่านยุทธิสงครามอะไรแบบนี้เกิดขึ้นก็เลยท่านก็ได้เขียนเอ่อจดหมายนะเพื่อเป็นการยุติสงครามแบบดีๆแล้วก็ให้ก
Okay, Mia Brody. Brody. Yes. Oh, I'm, Mia Brody. And you do. Arigashama Prabhu's uh, question is Arjun had uh, this fight in Biratnagar also before, but he did not show all these symptoms, the 10 symptoms. Uh, why is he showing all these symptoms just now and not before when there was fight going on uh, in Biratnagar? Yeah. Well, at, at Naga Lord Krishna was not present for one thing. You have to understand the arrangement of Lord Krishna so that he can speak the Bhagavad Gita. Now Arjuna is a, a great devotee, he's a great soul, he's a Pandava, one of the Pandavas. He's the son of Indra, he's, you know, he's, he's a Maharati, he's very powerful, but he's displaying all of these bodily symptoms. And the reason why he's displaying these symptoms is uh, he, he, it's arranged by Lord Krishna so that Lord Krishna can speak Bhagavad Gita. So Lord Krishna puts Arjuna into this into this condition, into this illusion, in this bodily consciousness of life, and it's then it's appropriate for Krishna to speak. Arjuna, remember he's he's put he's being put into this condition so that he can teach all of us. Because if we were in this situation certainly we would be affected. We would also be trembling and we would also be quivering. We would also, have, you know, we would certainly be very much concerned for our material situation. <laughs> Prabhupada gives an example. He said, just like when the daughter-in-law comes to stay in the home with, the mother, with the, her husband's mother and father, so the mother does not give direct instruction to the daughter-in-law but she will instruct her own daughter and by giving instruction to her own daughter she hopes that the daughter-in-law will also learn from that. And the daughter is in, you know, the, 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 the wife of the son is in a new home. She's come to her husband's home and so she's missing her own home, she's missing her own mother and father and she doesn't know the ways of her husband's mother and father. So the mother has to be very sensitive about giving instruction and she will not instruct her directly 
but she will instruct her own daughter. In the same way, Lord Krishna instructs Arjuna, who is his own devotee. But by instructing Arjuna, he's giving instruction to the whole world. ในลักษณะเดียวกันนะคะตรงนี้เนี่ยองค์พระองค์เจ้าคริสต์เนี่ยก็กําลังจะสั่งสอนองค์อรจุนะหรือว่าสั่งนะคะหรือว่ากําล
ขาอาจจะรู้นะคะสำหรับนักวัดทุนิยมเนี่ยบางทีเนี่ยเขาอาจจะรู้ว่าเฟตรงนี้เนี่ยมันเป็นสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์อะไรก็จริงนะคะแต่ว่าเขาเนี่ยจะไม่ช่วยโอกาสนะคะจากความศักดิ์สิทธิ์ของสถานที่นั้น So d r i t a r a s t r a you know, okay, it's a holy place. He doesn't want it; to, it should influence them. That's the point. Although he knows it's a holy place, he doesn't want it to influence the people, to influence his sons. He's worried that maybe my sons won't fight due to the influence of the holy place. แต่นะคะเขาแนบกลับกลัวว่าสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์เนี่ยมันจะส่งผลกระทบต่อลูกชายเขาหรือเปล่าอาจจะทําให้ลูกชายเขาเนี่ยอ,อยากจะยกเลิกสงครามนี้หรือเปล่านะคะเขาก็ยังมีความวิตกกังวลตรงนั้นอยู่ So he was so fixed, so set on having war that there must be this war that they have to go and fight. He he didn't care about the holy place. He didn't care about The different signs that it was going to be the victory for the Pandavas. He just thought, no, we have to go to war. We have to have this war. And he was convinced because he had people like Bhishma, and Bhishma was a great general. He was much greater than Bhima. Bhima was powerful, but he was nothing compared to Bhishma. But he had people like Bhishma, and Bhishma was powerful, but he was nothing compared to Bhishma. And he was convinced because he had people like Bhishma, and Bhishma was a great general. He was much greater than Bhima. But he had people like Bhishma, and Bhishma was powerful. And then they had Drona, who had been the guru. He's the guru. He taught the, everything the Pandavas know about fighting. And there was Karn also. Karna, Karna. He wasn't going to fight. He said, "I'm not going to fight until Bhishma falls. Let Bhishma be killed first, then I will come and fight." He said, "If I come and fight while Bhishma's there, Bhishma will get all the credit. I'll do all the fighting, and Bhishma will get all the credit." So he said, "I'm not going to come and fight until Bhishma falls. When Bhishma falls, then I'll come in the battle and fight." <laughs> ต่อสู้เนี่ยเป็นอย่างมากแล้วเขาก็ยังบอกอีกด้วยว่าข้าเนี่ยจะไม่เริ่มการต่อสู้ถ้าเกิดว่าท่านเสด็จกูบีมาบีชมาเนี่ยยังไม่ได้สิ้นชีพเพราะถ้าเกิดว่าข้าไปรบจนชนะแล้วเนี่ยสุดท้ายเนี่ยผลคนที่ได้รับประโยชน์เนี่ยก็จะกลายเป็นชื่อของบีชมาไปว่าเขาเนี่ยเป็นแม่ทัพเขาชนะไป And Lord Krishna Lord Krishna Lord Krishna and Kunti they both met with Karna and they told Karna You know, you're the eldest brother of the Pandavas. You're the son of Kunti. These Pandavas are your brothers. You should fight on their side. But Karna said, "No, I'm fighting against them. I'm the friend of Duryodhan." And Karna refused to come on the side of his own brothers. And so ultimately, Karna was killed in the battle. แล้วก่อนหน้าจะสงครามเริ่มนะคะความจริงพระนางคุณจีแล้วก็กริชนาเนี่ยได้ไปหาการนาแล้วก็บอกความจริงให้เขาทราบว่าความจริงเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยเป็นบุตรคนโตของนางแล้วก็เป็นพี่น้องแท้ๆของฝั่งพันดวะให้เขาเนี่ยย้ายฝั่งตามมาสู้สําหรับฝั่งพันดวะนะคะแต่การนาเนี่ยก็จะปฏิเสธแล้วก็บอกว่าไม่เอาหรอกข้าจะสู้ให้กับฝั่งดูเรียดันนั่นแหละเพราะเขาว่าเป็นเพื่อนของข้าและสุดท้ายการนาก็ต้องตายในสนามรบนะได้รับความพ่ายแพ้ไปในที่สุด So this is all the History of Mahabharata, Mahabharata, the history of Greater India, the history of the world, and one of the the great battles which took place 5,000 years ago. And the hero.
จริงนะคะที่ประเทศอินเดียที่ทุกคนก็จะทราบกันอยู่นะคะก็คือสงครามที่คุรุกระเสกหรือว่าที่คุรุเชต Lord Krishna arranged this battle actually Lord Krishna arranged it so that all these kings could come together and the earth could be relieved of the burden of so many demoniac kings สงครามนี้นะคะได้จัดขึ้นโดยพระประสงค์ของคริชนาะคะเพื่อที่จะทำลายล้างผู้คนที่มีแนวความคิดที่เป็นมารนะคะหรือว่าแนวความคิดที่ไม่ดีนั่นเองเพื่อให้คนเหล่านั้นเนี่ย But all the people who died on the battlefield they all got a good destination that the, those who died in the presence of Krishna would be liberated แต่ใครก็แล้วแต่นะคะที่ตายในการในสงครามในครั้งนี้เนี่ยสิ่งที่เขาจะได้รับก็คือเขาได้รับความพ้นนะคะได้ไปโลกสวรรค์ So there was some great benefit to this battle of Kurukshetra that so many souls could be elevated some went to heaven and some went to the, the spiritual world เพราะฉะนั้นสงครามนี้ที่เกิดขึ้นก็ถือว่าเป็นผลดีสําหรับดวงวิญญาณเช่นกันนะคะบางคนเนี่ยก็ได้ไปโลกสวรรค์บางคนก็ได้ไปโลกพิษทําให้พวกเขาเนี่ยได้รับความดุจดี Because Lord Krishna was present there เพราะว่าพระเจ้าทรงพระองค์ทรงปรากฏ All right any other question มีคําถามอีกไหมคะ No so we'll finish here tonight And we'll meet you tomorrow at the same time. I hope you have a bag of a Gita. If you don't have a bag of a Gita, you can get one online. I think we have a we have the you can get a soft copy on the internet. มาก็บอกว่าหวังว่าทุกคนนะคะคงมีหนังสือพระพุทธิตากับตนเองนะคะถ้าเกิดเราไม่มีเนี่ยก็สามารถสั่งซื้อได้หรือว่าสามารถดูเป็นซอฟต์ก๊อปปี้นะคะหาอ่านได้บนเว็บไซต์ So tomorrow we're going on to the second chapter แล้วพรุ่งนี้เราก็จะเรียนกันต่อในบทที่สอง Second chapter is called contents of the Gita summarized But its Sanskrit name is Sankhya Yoga. ในภาษาสันสกฤตนะคะจะเรียกว่า Sankhya Yoga. So we'll see you tomorrow. Shri Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Gor back to Vrinda ki. Yeah. Hari Bol.